الحج أشهر معلومات فمن فرض فيهن الحج فلا رفث ولا فسوق ولا جدال في الحج وما تفعلوا من خير يعلمه الله وتزودوا فإن خير الزاد التقوى واتقون يا أولي الألباب السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولاهما بعد So we're talking about various good deeds that we can do especially during the 10 days of the Hijjah but in reality any uh, time frame and uh, we were also talking about the issue of good manners and I had mentioned uh, in our last lecture the blessings of being good to one's parents Okay, before we move on to another good deed I also wanted to bring up another issue which Again, it is an awkward one. We rarely uh, talk about it, and yet it is something that is very important. And that is the issue of being good to one's family, fulfilling the ties of kinship, fulfilling the ties of kinship. And uh, the concept of kinship, the concept of being good to one's extended family. Yesterday we talked about, in particular, the parents. And there's no question that out of all the people in the world, the parents are number one category. Right after the parents, of course, comes your uh, spouse and your children and right after that comes your relatives and siblings and cousins and uncles and aunts this is all the family and then of course you have the extended family and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran that of the most fundamental characteristics of the believer and of piety and of righteousness and of the people of Jannah is to have what is called Silatul Arham. And Silatul Arham, it's a very interesting terminology that Allah uses in the Quran when it comes to fulfilling the ties of kinship. Sila means to connect. Sila means to bond with. And Arham is the plural of womb. Rahim is womb. And therefore, it is as if you are connecting or bonding with somebody who shares the same ancestry as you either the immediate ancestry, which is siblings, or a grandparent, which is cousins, or a second grandparent, which is second cousins, your whole family, you are sharing at some point in recent history, right? Either one generation ago, or two, or three, or as obviously it goes less and less as you go much, but the point, and meaning less and less means the bonds of kinship are of course considered to be less tight, less strict as you go further. But the point is that your cousin, right? At one point in time, the both of you, there is something in common and that is one person or one couple is in common. And that is a clear manifestation that the two of you have a bond and a connection. And so how can you just break away from one another when there is that strong bond that Allah Azza wa Jal has placed between you? And Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala mentions that being good to one's family is a reality that goes back even before Islam. That Allah says in the Quran, وَإِذَا خَذْنَا مِثَاقَ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ That Allah Azza wa Jal took the covenant with the children of Israel. Of Israel. And then he mentions that وَذِي الْقُرْبَى to be good good to one's parents and وَذِلْ qurba and to be good to one's relatives as well. So again, this is being good to one's family isn't just beginning with our uh, faith tradition as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah An-Nisa, وَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشْرِكُ بِيْشَيْنِ وَبِالْوَالِدِينِ إِحْسَانِ وَبِذِلْ qurba wal yatama. Same thing as well, that worship Allah alone and be good to your parents and be good to your relatives as well. Fulfilling the ties of kinship is one of the earliest commandments that came down from Allah to our Prophet ﷺ. There was a man from Yemen by the name of Amr ibn Abasa who came to Mecca when the Prophet ﷺ was just beginning to preach Islam. This is at the very beginning when there was just two or three converts and he heard that some rumors that the Prophet is preaching something. So he came to him privately and he said to him that, what are you, what are you preaching? What is your message? What has Allah sent you with? And the Prophet ﷺ said, Allah has sent me with three. Number one, that Allah alone be worshipped. And number two, that idols be avoided and destroyed. No idols, we should not worship them. And number three, that the family ties be maintained with kindness and mercy. 
These three things were the first things that the Prophet ﷺ said to uh, Amr ibn Abbas. And when Ja'far, the cousin of the Prophet ﷺ, was asked by the emperor of Abyssinia, what does your Prophet preach? What is he telling you to do? In that three or four lines that he said, what did Ja'far say? Ja'far mentioned that he tells us to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to be kind to our relatives and to give poor the charity and to take care of the orphan and to not eat the meat that is found. So he just gave a list of six, seven, eight things. The second thing that he mentioned, to worship Allah, Number two, to be good to our relatives, subhanAllah. Can you imagine? That was so clear in their minds that fulfilling the ties of kinship is something that is an essential characteristic of this religion and this faith. And in fact, the name of family in the Sharia, in the Quran and Sunnah, it comes from the very name of Allah, Ar-Rahman. There is a hadith in Sahih Bukhari that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, when Allah created the creation, the womb stood up, the womb. And what is the name for womb in Arabic? Rahim, stood up and said that, what is my maqam, O Allah? What is my status, O Allah? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, are you not content that whoever you connect with, I shall connect with them. And that whoever you cut off with, I shall cut off from them. In other words, when family, that we can say here the concept of family, right? The concept of family stood up and said to Allah, what is my haqq, O Allah? Allah said, whoever connects the family is connected with me. And whoever breaks away from the family, breaks away from me. In another hadith in Sahih Bukhari, the Prophet ﷺ said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I am Ar-Rahman, and from my name Ar-Rahman, I created the family Ar-Rahim. Again, I'm translating Ar-Rahim as family because that's the meaning of it. Technically, Rahim means womb, technically. But in Arabic, Rahim and Arham means your family. That's what it means, you're your kith and kin, your cousins, your uncles and aunts, your second cousins, that's your family. Now again, as I said earlier, the closer the kinship, the more the right. So the right your brother has over you is much more than the right your uncle has over you. The right your uncle has over you is more than the right your cousin has over you, and so on and so forth. In fact, in the Quran, it is one of the very few things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala curses in the Quran. Allah literally curses in the Quran that Allah says, those who break the covenant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and cut off, وَيَقْطَعُونَ مَا أَمَرَ اللَّهُ بِأَنْ يُصَلَى Cut off the ties that Allah has commanded them to fulfill. Allah says, upon them is the la'na of Allah and upon them is the evil abode of Jahannam. And therefore, we need to be very, very careful about the ties of kinship. And we have, uh, you know, something that we need to be uh, very explicit about that, listen, dear Muslims, dear brothers and sisters, Every single family has issues and politics. This is the reality of humanity. Everybody's got an uncle or a sibling or a cousin that you know you just roll your eyes and say, may Allah protect and help us. Everybody, everybody's got family drama. Everybody's got some thing that happened at somebody's wedding and shadi over there. This is the reality of life, okay? You have to deal with it and live with it and move on with it and make sure that you know, okay, things happen, you need to move on and heal and, and, and mend those wounds. And there are a number of things that can be said here on a practical level, that obviously we're talking about fulfilling the ties of kinship when you are not in physical or emotional harm, obviously. If there is a family member that is physically harmful, or emotionally abusive to the point of you cannot you know, stand uh, and it's something that is traumatic or something. We're not talking about that, that's a separate issue. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that there should be no harming of others. So if somebody's harming you, obviously, we're not talking about that. But otherwise, just a sarcastic remark or just you know, bad manners or whatnot, this is a part of the friction of life. And it is inevitable. And for sure, you as well have been imperfect with other people's relationships, just like others have been imperfect to your relationships. So what are some of the things that you can do? First and foremost, do realize that time does heal all wounds. This is one of the greatest ironies of life that subhanallah, you know, you think that something happens and it's going to always be a, a barrier between you and your uh, relative, but subhanallah, 
يعني, things happen and it's really ironic that at times it is tragedies that combine families. You know, the death of a, uh, a loved one, for example, will bring two cousins who haven't spoken for many years, maybe even a sibling, a'udhu uh, billah. And so before that time comes, but still, if, if, if that is what causes it, then you know, okay, that is what causes it and bring some reconciliation uh, from that as well. Also, be the better of the two. You don't know that maybe a kind gesture, a kind word, you know, the main problem that happens, and again, that may be very honest here, the main problem that happens between two family members that begin an issue is arrogance. Arrogance, that's the main problem. A trivial issue, one, buddy, one person said something, the other person followed it up and then that's it. Egos become so big for some reason when it's family, that would never be for a stranger. And you know, you would think that for family members, it should be the smallest ego, but that is the reality of humanity. And so when you have this, make dua to Allah too, grant you humility and be the better of the two. Begin with a positive gesture. And remember the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu the one who fulfills the ties of kinship is not the one who treats his relatives the way they treat him. No, the one who fulfills really the ties of kinship is that when his relatives break off from him, he is the one who mends that relationship. That is the one who is the higher level. Let's get there to that level. I conclude by reminding us of the beautiful hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's an authentic hadith and it's an incentive for us to be good to our family. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whoever wishes that his life be extended and his sustenance be increased, then let him be good to his family. Let him fulfill the ties of kinship. Who amongst us does not want to live a long life? And who amongst us does not want to have more wealth? And he is giving us an incentive. Allah and his messenger are telling us, you want to live longer, happier, healthier then you be the better person for your extended family and be the more kinder, the more compassionate. So during these 10 days, especially that cousin you've had an issue with, that uncle or aunt, that extended relative that you cut off from, now is the time in these 10 days, especially make that phone call, send that email on a positive thing. And inshallah ta'ala, Give a gift and you will see the reality given back to you and Allah Azza wa Jal will bless you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us always the better of the two in any situation. Inshallah we'll continue tomorrow. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <laughs> فَمَنْ تَعَجَّلَ فِي يَوْمَيْنِ فَلَا إِثْمَ عَلَيْهِ وَمَنْ تَأَخَّرَ فَلَا إِثْمَ عَلَيْهِ لِمَنِ اتَّقَى وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَاعْلَمُوا أَنَّكُمْ إِلَيْهِ تُحْشَرُونَ